Hello friends, in this lecture we will continue with the fundamentals of dynamic simulation and we will know about modal analysis. So in dynamic simulation the first type of analysis that we perform is called the modal analysis and these are all the other name of this type of analysis. It is also called normal model analysis, eigenvalue problem and mode shape. So before going into the depth of software, let's understand the basics of model analysis. First of all, we need to understand what is model analysis and why it is performed. Model analysis is an approach to find out the natural frequency of a system. So with the model analysis, we only find out the natural frequency of a system. Now for each natural frequency, we find out the mode shape. Now mode shape basically shows the deformation of the body. For each natural frequency, the body has a deformation and with the model analysis, we will find out that type of deformation at that natural frequency. So we had discussed about this what is natural frequency. It is a frequency at which a body vibrates. A system can have infinite number of natural frequency. So whenever we perform the model analysis, we need to define the number of frequencies we want. So generally a body has infinite number of natural frequency, but a software cannot calculate the infinite numbers. So we need to define some finite numbers in the software. And also we know that natural frequency of a system depend on the stiffness of the structure and the mass of the structure. So we know that natural frequency of a body that is represented by omega is equal to under root k by m. So k is basically the stiffness and this is the mass. So this mass includes the self weight of the body and the natural frequency depend on the so when we had learned about the derivation of the governing equation for the natural frequency, we had applied the boundary condition. So also natural frequency depend on the boundary conditions. Now we know this is the governing equation for a dynamic system. So we consider this as a like we have a spring mass system like this. So I have a spring and then mass. So this spring has a stiffness k and mass m. So this is the mathematics behind solving the model analysis. So generally the software consider this equation that is mx double dot plus kx equal to zero. Now in the software we need to solve this equation. And one way of solving this equation is to assume, assume a harmonic solution x equal to phi sin omega t. So phi is basically the mode shape or eigenvector and omega is the natural frequency. So after we put all these value of x inside this equation, we get this equation like this. And when we cancel out the sine omega t from here, we will get equation like this. Now inside this equation we can see we have a constant that is omega square. Now from this equation, we can write this lambda equal to omega. So this lambda is basically a constant value. Okay, so this is a constant and this constant value is called the eigenvalue. So we can write this equation in the form of k minus lambda m into phi. And this is the equation that software solve. So k is the stiffness matrix and m is the mass matrix. And the software solve this equation for n number of eigenvalues and the value of n we specify in the software. Now in Abacus, we have three types of solver to perform the modal analysis. The first solver is called the Lanco solver, second is AMS solver and third is subspace solver. So if you go into the mathematics of this solver, it is going to be very complex. So I'm not going into the deep mathematics of the solver, but I'm going to show you some advantage or disadvantage of the solver. So the most preferred over all the three methods is called the Lankos. Now Lankos gives a very accurate mode shape, but it is good for small system 
and it is good for finding out the lower natural frequencies and whenever we have a large assembly and we need to find out the higher number of natural frequency we use this method of AMS and third method is subspace so now the subspace is very much similar to the length course but the problem is it takes more time so whenever we need to find out the higher natural frequency for the small system we consider this option of subspace but generally in industries most preferred is the Lanco solver so we are going to use the Lanco solver into this problem now let's define the problem we have a beam so I have a beam here which is fixed from one side on the left side now this is the length of beam and that this is the cross-sectional area of the beam so basically we need to find out the natural frequency for this beam okay so we need to find out the value of omega we will use the solver that is Lanco's and this is the material property for this steel here value of E density and nu is given now before solving this problem in the abacus we need to understand how the software will going to approach for this problem we know the governing equation is mx double dot plus kx is equal to zero and we are given in this problem we have a beam okay now we need to understand how can we relate this problem with a beam because this is we consider for the spring mass system spring mass system here and this is a beam so how can we relate them so now let's understand this so I'm going to make a partition of this and then so we know we have a spring mass system here like this so this is called the spring mass system and this is the K for this we know the spring force F equal to kx where k is the stiffness k is the stiffness and x is the displacement so when we apply the load here the spring is going to dif displace like this so f equal to kx now let's consider the example of a beam okay beam or we can take bar anything now here i have a bar like this now so this is basically a straight bar I'm going to pull this bar using a force F and similarly I'm going to pull this from the both side so now I am applying a pulling force inside this so we know that stress sigma equal to value of E that is Young's modulus into strain so this is our stress and this is strain And this E is called the Young's modulus. Now we know the value of stress is equal to, see the stress equal to force divided by area and also into E. Let's consider after we apply a load, the bar is going to deform. So it is going to stretch at a displacement of X. So let's say the X is the displacement inside this bar and original length is L train is basically change in length that is X divided by the original length now let's compare this if we put this A here we will get this equation F equal to value of A into E divided by L multiplied by X now let's compare these two equations so we have x f here and then x here so this value is called the k now for the bar or beam element the k is calculated using this equation a e divided by l so that's how we relate our governing equation with a bar element so that is why we need to specify the value of e area and length can be calculated from the geometry and the value of mass can be calculated from the density so we know that density is equal to mass divided by volume 
so once we specify the value of density volume we can calculate from the geometry and the mass can be calculated so this is how the software works when it solve a problem of model analysis